What's going on y'all? I'm Charles. Welcome back to Push the Prod. Today, I'm going to be going over some things that you probably need to know to become a network analyst. So let's just jump right into it. I done seen a lot of people change, but stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people switched up, stay down, you gon' win. I done seen a lot of people change, but stay down. So the first thing I want to go over is the basic topography of networking. And what that basically is, is a layout of the network and how nodes in that network are all connected to each other. So in that topography, we'll start with the modem. Now, the modem should be a household name to everyone. Whether you have AT&T or Comcast, this is the device that allows you to have internet connection. And it applies to any small or large business as well. That's usually the first line of connection. When it comes to networking, if the modem is down, any device behind it should be down as well. Behind the modem is the firewall. Now, you can kind of think of the firewall as a bouncer or a security to a club. If you seem kind of fishy just hanging around or you might not have the correct ID or credentials, you're not getting in. Same thing with the firewall for business. It's basically the frontline defense to filter traffic or protect against things that potentially have the possibility to be detrimental to a business's network. Next, we have the switch. Now, the switch is a device that acts as a central base. It has ports and it holds different devices to connect to a network. And this allows for the devices to be connected all at once without interrupting each other. Now, after the switch, we have one part, which is the AP or access point. So the AP is able to connect to devices and give them connection wirelessly. And you guys should know it as Wi-Fi. And the other part of it are wired devices. It needs to be connected through a physical cable to have connection. Now, like I said before, if the modem is down, then you know all the other devices that come behind it should be down. On the other hand, if say the firewall's down, that doesn't necessarily mean that the modem is down. You have to do your due diligence and troubleshooting to figure out the actual cause of the issue. So say you have a device that's connected to the switch and it's acting a little funny, then you would just go up the chain to figure out the issue. So you would start at the switch, make sure that everything is connected how it should be, make sure the switch is getting power. After you figured out the switch is fine, then you would go up to the firewall. And if you see there's something wrong with the firewall, then you have your issue. That's just kind of the troubleshooting that we have to do on a daily basis. Now, another part of networking that I wanna get into are commands. Now, commands are mainly used for getting system information and troubleshooting network issues. So, one command that is widely popular, you'll probably be using it every day, is ping. Now, ping allows you to check to see if a network connected device with an IP address is online. Now, a little bit into how it works, it sends a packet over the network to a device and if a response returns, then you're good to go. That device has connection. But on the other hand, if a packet sends out and no response is returned, then you probably have some work to do because that specific device is most likely offline. The trace route tool, it tracks the pathway that the packet took to find the dropping connection from one IP address to another. So it's a really helpful tool to figure out where the problem areas are located. The next one is NS lookup or name server lookup. And that's just used to find an IP address or a domain name system. One thing I wanted to touch on are certs. And um, as you guys should probably know by now, I don't have any certs um, at the moment, but I've been seeing a lot of comments asking about it. You know, in the past, when I was doing my research, I came across a couple of them that probably would be helpful for you guys to know if you wanted to go in that direction. And the ones that I saw, some jobs will require or will recommend are the CompTIA, Network Plus, the Cisco CCNA, and CCNP. For the Network Plus, um, just gotta show basic knowledge of networking concepts, networking security and operations, and just some basic troubleshooting. The um, CCNA and the CCNP focus more on the networking fundamentals and access management. To get to where I was, I didn't need certs, but like I said, there's, you know, it's different for every company, it's different for 
you know, every organization. It would be good to have um, a couple of certs or a cert under your belt just to put you ahead of that competition and really make you stand out. One thing that you'll probably need for this position is a lot of patience. Guys, I really can't stress this enough. When you're working in a field like this, it can get frustrating at times. Although, you know, it's fun, it can be challenging. I remember um, a couple months ago when I was on a call with somebody trying to troubleshoot one of the devices not functioning properly. I mean, I could have sworn I went through every, every avenue. I was asking questions, I was on the phone for a while, and it ended up being like a cable not being all the way pressed in. You always gotta make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's and to make sure that every stone is unturned. Another aspect I wanna kinda touch on in networking is monitoring. Now, monitoring isn't um, just from the name, it isn't exactly what you think. You're not just you know staring at a screen all day long and doing anything. It's some things that you have to know and some things that you have to know to look for to see if everything is running how it should and looking exactly how it should. So for my position, there are many dashboards that you have to look at just on a daily basis. You know, some of the few I use are Orion or SolarWinds. The SolarWinds dashboard is basically used to monitor and detect any network outages or issues that you may see on a network. It's really helpful because it's kind of like a, hey, um, this site is down. It may need some immediate action. But sometimes um, looking at that dashboard, you can kind of beat the end user to the punch when trying to troubleshoot for issues. As soon as you reach out to them, you already know what's going on, you know how long it's been down, and you're kind of able to jump on it pretty quickly. And when you're looking at these dashboards, off rip, you should know anything red is bad. If you see anything red, um, it wouldn't hurt to click into it just to kind of explore, see exactly what's down and where the problem areas are occurring. Now, I'm not saying you have to stare at a screen for eight hours at a time, but just have it up at one of the tabs, glance at it and just go back through it periodically. You should be good to go. You shouldn't miss that much. But on the other hand, there's been times where I've missed some things like I'll get up for a coffee break or go to the bathroom and come back and there'll be two notes down. And I'd usually have to you know, call the store or call the site, the end user, and kind of troubleshoot and they've already been aware that day's been down so you know sometimes things might go by but it's never the end of the world um and half the time they don't even know that we know that we can see you know the stuff on their network so you know it's not that big of a deal and another aspect of that that i wanted to touch on are isps or internet service providers and that's basically you know third-party companies that actually provide those companies or those businesses internet and sometimes those isps can be kind of complicated to work with you know a lot of times you'll bump heads and you might not see eye to eye you know they'll pull you this way while you're trying to go this way it's just a lot of room for gray area when you're dealing with them although they're great to have to call in and check to see if there are any outages in the area or just if there's anything going on with the modem um, they're pretty good at checking those but you kind of have to stay on them because sometimes they tend to not give enough updates, so you have to call in. You know, just like us, we're dealing with a um, variety of issues, and they're doing the same thing. So if you open a tick with an ISP, and you haven't heard from them in, say, an hour, an hour and a half, and the site that you're dealing with needs internet connection, you might want to check in time to time, just to make sure that they're on top of things, and they're actively working on the issue that you presented to them. All right, I hope this information was valuable to you guys. I tried to get as much information as I could in one video, and I hope I you know, explained it to the best of my abilities. If you heard anything from this video that you kind of wanted me to touch on a little bit more, um, like I always say, feel free to drop it down in the comments. You know, we're always looking at them. We're always trying our best to respond to them. Um, even though it might take a little bit of time, we're still doing our best. And just know we have some content coming, we have some ideas, we have some things that are in the works. Please be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.